Hi, it's Dino, and I want to talk to you about encrypted JWT. For several years, Apigee has had built-in policies that handle signed JWT, can generate or verify signed JWT. Uh, some customers would like to also handle encrypted JWT. Now, for those of you who are not aware, JWT is defined in an IETF RFC, so it's a standard, uh, and there are two variants. Uh, one variant is signed JWT, and if you're thinking about JWT and you've used it, it's probably, it's highly likely uh, that you've come across signed JWT. If you're just thinking JWT, it's the signed JWT probably that you're dealing with. It's a three-part structure in compact serialization. Um, that structure is defined in a different RFC, uh, RFC 7515. Uh, it's called JSON Web Signature. There is a second variant for JWT, and that is encrypted, the encrypted version, and that is defined in RFC 7516. Uh, and what that does is, rather than just signing the payload inside uh, the JWT, it encrypts it. So it makes sure that that payload can only be readable by the holder of the private key. So it behaves a little bit differently than a signed JWT. Nonetheless, it is still called a JWT, different variant. There are no, as of today, there are no built-in policies in Apigee that handle encrypted JWT, but fear not, there is a Java callout that will allow you to handle uh, encrypted JWT inside your Apigee Edge organization. I want to show you how that works today. So this is done with some custom Java code. It's called, uh, the extension mechanism is called a Java callout and there's a reusable policy that I've built that anybody can use. You do not have to build the source code in order to use it. It's ready to use just out of the box. In fact, it's in this uh, repo. So you can go clone it. You can go clone this repo uh, in your own uh, in your own development workstation. Then let's see, we'll go into that and then you can see I've got all that source code. I've got a callout, uh, which is the source code including all the Java um, and, um, and tests and also an example bundle. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, deploy that example bundle into my organization. To do that, I'll use the import and deploy tool that I have. Um, it uses Node.js, so it's import and deploy. Um, let's see, my organization is in that environment variable, my environment is in that environment variable, and I want to uh, use this as the source. So that's going to take uh, a little while. Um, we're going to deploy that, and you can see all the, the dependency jars that are going to be deployed along with that. So in the meantime, let's have a look at the example bundle. Uh, we can click into this repo and we can see uh, there's a single proxy and it's got a couple of, end, uh, couple of uh, conditional flows. One that generates, uh, asks the proxy to generate a JWT, another that generates a JWE. And that bears some comment. What's the difference between an encrypted JWT and a JWE? Well, JWT is a particular, if it's the encrypted variant, it's a particular kind of JWE. JWE defines how to encrypt anything, any byte stream, and then wrap it with some metadata that's defined in JSON. So that would be the JSON header. Uh, an encrypted JWT is a special kind of JWE in that the payload itself is JSON. So JWE can be encrypted anything, JWT is encrypted JSON. Both of them have metadata. The header is JSON. Um, and in any case, this um, callout that I'm showing you can handle generation of either uh, JWT or arbitrary data. You can, you can uh, encrypt any byte stream, a simple string or um, anything you like. And then there are corresponding conditional flows for verifying uh, the same. So let's have a look at how this works. Um, uh, we'll go back to the README. Uh, there is um, some example definitions or example documentation for how you can configure your own uh, policies to do that. Inside this example bundle, I'm just um, using those. So you'll see this one generates a JWT and that's how it works. 
I specify the jar, I specify the class name, and then I specify some of the things that I want. For example, the key encryption, content encryption, and maybe what I would like to encrypt, as well as the expiry on that thing and which uh, public key to use when generating that uh, encrypted JWT. Um, so that's just built right in. And I've also got uh, some examples for how you can try this out. So I've um, deployed the bundle. Let me just copy this command and we'll show you how it works. So that's all deployed and that took a minute, minute and a half to upload all that and deploy it. Now I should be able to invoke it and you'll see I'll do just that. And I get a JWT out. This looks very similar to a signed JWT. In fact, it's hard to tell the difference just looking at it here. Um, but uh, we can paste that into an online JWT decoder. Let's make that a little bigger. Uh, and you can see uh, it's got five parts, not three. Assigned JWT has five parts. This one is uh, encrypted and it's got, uh, sorry, assigned JWT has three parts. This one is encrypted as five. And uh, because it is encrypted, we cannot see the payload until we decrypt it. What we can see is the header, header, which is JSON metadata, and that's just corresponding to this. That's just a base 64 decoding of that part. Um, so we can see that. Uh, we can't see the payload until we decrypt it. How would we be, be able to decrypt it? Uh, well, we need to paste in the private key. So this is the private key that was used by that API proxy to um, uh, to generate the JWT, and by pasting that in and then clicking this uh, verify, I can actually decrypt the payload and see um, what other things, uh, what specific claims are in there, including um, the issued at time, the expiry time, the JTI. This all looks like a signed JWT, of course, but this was encrypted. We can only see this because we decrypted it with a correct private key. Okay, so that's how we can. Um, uh, generated JWT and let me just show you that in in practice so I've deployed it to this organization let me show you the trace uh, behind that uh, execution we'll just go in here uh, click on start trace and go back to my window and we'll run that again we'll just generate another one a fresh one um, and I'm gonna want to use that in a second so let me grab that um, but anyway, we can go back to the um, to the trace window, and we see it's just really just a, a single um, Java callout policy uh, using a particular public key, uh, and the payload that gets uh, encrypted is stipulated to that Java policy, and then this is the um, the output, and then we just send that back. Um, next thing I might want to do is verify an encrypted JWT, and we can do that the same way. Um, Let's see, we'll look at the, we'll look at the um, source code here for the API proxy, the configuration of the policy. So we looked at the generate JWT. Let's look at the verify JWT policy. It looks basically the same. We're using the same jar, different class, and different things that we have to specify in order to verify. In particular, we have to specify a private key because that's what's required when uh, verifying uh, an encrypted JWT. So... Um, so that's all good. That private key is kind of built into the um, API proxy for demonstration purposes. Now let's see if we can um, we can exercise that part too. So we'll go back over to the command line. We'll call the verify endpoint, and sure enough, I can get back the header and the payload that was decrypted. Remember, the header isn't um, isn't encrypted. Uh, we need that metadata, and that's just readable in the clear. But the payload is. Uh, and it's only visible when we can decrypt it. And likewise, you can see in the trace, um, the verified JWT policy worked uh, really nicely as well. And it's got all the uh, variables that it's set and so on. So uh, that's it. If you need to handle encrypted JWT in Apigee today, you can do it. You can do it with the Java callout. Uh, it's really easy. Um, it's available for you, uh, GitHub. If you need support for this sort of thing, just visit uh, community.com. Uh, people are always there, ready to answer your questions. Um, but this should work for you. There are some limitations, I'll point out, uh, in that, uh, in particular, this callout only handles algorithms that are RSA-based. So encrypted JWT has lots of different um, algorithms that are supported. 
uh, in general. This particular callout only handles RSA keys. Um, the forthcoming callouts that uh, Apogee will be delivering uh, will be uh, more general and will support all the other algorithms as well, but this one, um, this callout only supports um, the RSA keys. All right, that's it for now. Uh, hope this has been helpful. See you next time.